Trevor Story is back with the Boston Red Sox, but it won't really mean too much to this Red Sox team down the stretch. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut, former ESPN social media associate and current host of the Boston Balling Podcast as well. And I am here to bring you the latest in all things Boston Red Sox, Monday through Friday, straight to your favorite podcast feed. And the best part is it is all completely free. So you might as well tune in because Lockdown is your team every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Unfortunately, it is Monday and a Monday in which the Red Sox are coming off of a loss, so it makes it an even longer Monday. But the good news is Patriots football did return yesterday, and they did record a win against a good Bengals team that I expect to be in the mix come closer to playoff time. So that was definitely a bit surprising. I like the vibes there, and I like Gerard Mayo and what he's really trying to do with this team. So we'll see. Maybe they'll surprise people this year and be a uh, surprising team like the Texans were last year. But as far as the Red Sox go, they have not been a huge surprise as of late because the way they've been playing baseball overall is very much not up to par with what we wanted to see from them, especially from what they did going into the All-Star break. So now we're sitting here with the Red Sox still a good distance behind the Royals and Twins in the wild card standings and it's just not looking likely at this point for them to make the playoffs. I did say on the show the other day that it's time to call it quits on this season and the chances of making the playoffs. The Red Sox did take two of three from the White Sox over the weekend. They won game one three to one, game two seven to five, and then they lost game three seven to two. And overall, I mean, the first game of that series, the offense wasn't amazing. I mean, five hits, but they made them count as they did record three runs in the game for the win. Rafaela did hit a big, huge two-run homer in that game to give the Red Sox a lead they wouldn't relinquish. And Nick Pavetta threw six innings of five-hit, one-run ball. So that was very impressive, and I liked a lot of what I saw from him. Red Sox pitching staff able to contain the White Sox, and then Zach Kelly, Brennan Bernardino, and Josh Winkowski came out of the bullpen and all put zeros up on the board. So that definitely helped, but Rafaela's two-run homer that was crushed gave the Red Sox that boost to win game one. And then in game two, when they won 7-5, they did record 10 hits in that game. With Cooper Criswell starting, he went five innings, giving up six hits and two earned runs. And the biggest thing of note from that game is that Trevor Story made his return to the Red Sox lineup at shortstop. Now, this is something that fans have been waiting for for a while. He did make the move up to the Red Sox from Worcester on Saturday, and the Red Sox did make several other roster moves this weekend, which I will be touching on all of them on the show. But on Saturday, they reinstated Trevor Story from the 60-day injured list after going down in early April, and for a while, the conversation was whether he was even going to be able to play at all again this season, because it wasn't looking likely that he would, but... Then he was recovering at a faster pace than the Red Sox expected, ended up getting to the point where he can now play for the rest of the season. So in a corresponding roster move, they did option catcher slash infielder Mickey Gasper to AAA Worcester. And they also on that same day recalled right-handed pitcher Isaiah Campbell from Worcester because he technically was on the 40-man roster. And then they placed him on the 60-day injured list with right elbow inflammation. So he's not somebody who that was going to get called up and get playing time in the majors, but it was more so they could clear a spot on the 40-man 
roster, so they placed him on the 60-day injured list because he is dealing with that right elbow problem right now. But Mickey Gasper was sent back down to Worcester, which made a lot of sense because unfortunately for him, he failed to log a hit in 16 plate appearances while up in the majors with the Red Sox, but he has hit well in AAA with a 1.179 OPS at that level. So obviously he wasn't ready to get called up to the majors and is somebody who simply might just not be good enough to play at the major league level. So in order to activate Story, it made sense that he was the move that he got sent back down to AAA, just really was struggling to find his swing in the majors. But I do wish him the best in AAA. I mean, he seems like a really good kid with a really good family and was just working super hard to get his call up. So I'm sure he's grateful for the fact that he got his call up. But that was the corresponding move. Trevor Story was activated and... For him, he hadn't played since April 5th. To start the season, he opened up the season in that opening series for the Red Sox against the Mariners when they were on that West Coast trip at the Mariners on March 28th on opening day. He went 1 for 4 to start his batting average at a 250, but then he went 0 for 4 the next day to drop down to a 125 average. Drop down even further to an 077 average on March 30th when he went 0 for 5, and then in the final game against the Mariners on March 31st, he went 2 for 4 to bump himself back up to a 176. So he was all over the place in that first series of the season, not fully lost locked in and having his fair share of struggles at the plate and in terms of strikeouts in that series he did rack up at least one strikeout in all of those games with two strikeouts in the final game of that series on March 31st then the Red Sox hit the road to Oakland to play the A's the first game of that series he went one for four with two RBIs in that game bumped his batting average up to a 190 and then dropped up a lot to a 269 after the second game at the Athletics because he went three for five in that game and drove in two runs. He did strike out twice, but it certainly was a boost to his batting average. Then on April 3rd, he went 0 for three with a walk and a strikeout went from a 269 to a 241 average. And then on April 5th, when the Red Sox were in their next series against the Angels, that was the game where he faced the injury and went down and has now been out ever since until this series against the White Sox. Went 0 for 2 in that game with a 226 batting average. So he was sitting at a 226 average when he came back. And then on Saturday versus the White Sox, he did record an RBI single going 1 for 4 in that game with two strikeouts to boost his batting average up to a 229. And then on Sunday, September 8th in yesterday's game, he went 1 for 3 with a strikeout. So he did record another hit and now has a 237 average on the season. But the reason I rattled off all of those numbers is to show the inconsistency at the plate that he had going into this season and the fact that he still has that inconsistency and he's still generating the swings and misses. Now granted, it's been a while since he's been on the Major League team and seen Major League pitching, so we have to definitely give him the benefit of the doubt and not fully jump to conclusions based on this one series against the White Sox. But he is a big swing and miss hitter, and he has struggled offensively with consistency in his time with the Red Sox in general. That's not just a right now thing. That's just how it's been since he's been in a Red Sox uniform. So my fear is that he's still that hitter that isn't going to be overly productive on offense. And when we're looking at the rest of this season, the fact the Red Sox likely won't make the playoffs anyway, I'm happy he's able to get some reps in there, but I don't expect him to do a lot of big things offensively. What he does bring to the table is his defense. He is a great defender, and he's somebody who is going to be able to have some lockdown plays that he makes in the infield, and it's going to generally make the Red Sox look cleaner as an overall infield, which I think is something that's super important. Because defensively, the Red Sox have made a lot of miscues in his absence. And for him to be in there and making good plays defensively at shortstop, it's going to make the Red Sox look more like a cohesive unit in that infield, which is huge. So that certainly is something that he brings to the table that I find to be super important. But when it comes to him making this drastic difference for the rest of this season to the point where it's going to put the Red Sox over the edge to make the playoffs, 
I'm not thinking that's going to be the case. I just think they've dug themselves too deep of a hole now to the point where they can't really get out of it. And it's just tough for them to make up that ground. And I don't think Trevor Story is the type of player who will have that big of an impact to where he'll make that much of a difference. But the positive side is that they get his defense back, somebody who is truly a remarkable defender in the shortstop position. And I'm happy to have him back from the standpoint of just how much he really wanted to be out there. So he was in the lineup for two consecutive games for the Red Sox on Saturday and Sunday. Alex Cora did say that Sadam Raffaella would get more reps at second base now with story being back so you have to wonder how that's going to work with you know Valdez, Gonzalez, guys who kind of flip in the infield positions how that's going to affect their playing time because they do want story to be the everyday shortstop right now so Rafaela is going to be getting more opportunities at second base so it'll be interesting to see how that goes for him and for the Red Sox and how it affects some lineup reshuffling I mean Connor Wong who's been playing in the infield here and there this season played in the outfield for the first time ever in a game earlier this week so it just shows that there might be some weird roster removement going on but overall I think Story is really happy to be back him being back will definitely make a difference defensively do I think him being back is going to make this big enough difference to where it's going to push the Red Sox into the playoffs no but hopefully he can get his back going so that next year he can be a big piece on offense Coming up, I'm going to be talking about a player who was short-lived on the Red Sox roster and could possibly be at the end of his career now. So that's coming up next. You've heard me talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, I have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then, with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. And if that's not enough, FanDuel also has something special for our listeners this weekend. Be sure to check out FanDuel's Profit Boost in the app and use it for FanDuel's Double Your Winnings for all Sunday 9-8 pregame Moneyline bets. Profit Boost will be live starting Friday 9-6, and this will continue throughout the football season. View your account page now to learn more about your boost. Just visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. FanDuel is addicting. My fiance literally this morning was on his little spreadsheet making his bets for the day for what's going on with games later tonight. So you might get addicted, but don't say I didn't warn you. Just check it out today. Thank you for making Lockdown Red Sox your first listen today. For your second listen, enjoy the Lockdown MLB podcast. Host Paul Sullivan, aka Sully, is here daily to provide national expertise with his trademark humor to help you get ready for the MLB playoffs here in the dog days of summer. Prepare for the fall classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day on Lockdown MLB, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Sully is very fun and so entertaining, so I highly recommend you checking out his show after this. The Boston Red Sox got a key player in Trevor Story back over the weekend. He returned in the second of a three-game series against the White Sox. Do I think his back presence is going to be this major development and a game changer to where it'll help the Red Sox make the playoffs? No, but I do think especially from a defensive standpoint, having him back is going to be a big boost to this team. And it showed over the weekend with the defensive plays that he made. But he returned in a big game for the Red Sox on Saturday, a game that they won 7-5. to five. And there were other things of note that happened in that game. Like, Romy Gonzalez went three for four, and so did Tyler O'Neill. O'Neill also crushed two home runs in the game, and that was his sixth multi-home run game of the season, which is tied for the most multi-home run games of a season by a Red Sox player since David Ortiz in 2014. So if he has another multi-home run game this season, that would put him at the top for most multi-home run games of a season at that time 
in that time span. So it'll be interesting to continue to watch for that as it progresses. But the Red Sox did win that game 7-5 to five with Story going 1-4 for four in that game. And he now has a 289 on base percentage and 314 slugging to go along with a 229 average. Displayed some good defense in the game for Boston as well. And that was a game in which the Red Sox had a lot of offensive momentum. They absolutely crushed Garrett Crochet, who took the loss in the game, and he only lasted two innings and gave up five hits and four earned runs. So the Red Sox did pounce on him early, but it was interesting to say the least because a lot of times the Red Sox do hit well against these really good pitchers, but then can't do anything against pitchers who aren't having as good of a season. So it's really weird, but... The Red Sox did make some more roster moves prior to this series. So on Friday, before the series even started, they selected right-handed pitcher Louis Guerrero to the active Major League roster from AAA Worcester, and it was announced that he will wear number 99. To make room for him, the club DFA'd Rich Hill, which I do see the mixed emotions that come with this because people love Rich Hill. He's just... Such a team player. He's a veteran with lots of experience who just wanted to be out there playing. But the Red Sox decided to DFA him, and Alex Cora did explain that a lot of it has to do with Guerrero, and the organization was impressed with him and what they've seen from him in AAA. He's throwing the ball well and throwing a lot of strikes, generating swings and misses, and we felt like it was time to get him here. With the Rich, obviously it's a tough one. Everybody feels about him that he's part of the organization. You know he's going to be a Red Sox for life, but I think it's more for us to start getting guys here that can contribute now and obviously in the future. So that statement is big because... It goes to show that since the Red Sox are slipping more and more out of a wild card chance right now, they are kind of trying to give guys a shot who have been impressing in AAA that maybe could be a part of the future. And they want to see what those guys can bring to the table at this point in time. And Guerrero is somebody who has pitched well at the AAA level. So the Red Sox said, well, Rich Hill is somebody who's not going to be part of the future of this team. So rather than keeping him around, if they were closer to the wild card race, then I would get them wanting to keep Hill because they would want to have him help give that extra boost as they get closer closer and closer to the playoffs, but because it's looking less and less likely that they'll make the playoffs now, they want to give a younger guy a shot who has developed really well within the organization and has pitched well in AAA, give him the chance to come up and showcase what he can do in the majors. So they DFA'd Rich Hill just 10 days after he kicked off his fourth stint for his hometown team. And it's possibly marking the end of a career that lasted two decades, which is crazy. I don't know that anybody's going to pick him up at this point. So that might have been the end of the road for him, which is really bittersweet to think about. I mean, a great career that he had. So if he does have the end of his career now, there's no shame in anything he did throughout the course of his career that he should be upset over. What a successful career for him. And if it's not the end, well, that's awesome for him and he can continue to do big things but it's also sad if he is done because Rich Hill's been around for so long so it'll be weird without him but I definitely wish the best for him regardless of what happens with him moving forward but Louis Guerrero spent part of his childhood living in Boston and rooting for the Red Sox and this is his first stint in the major leagues for him who was one of the hardest throwers in the Red Sox farm system this season at Triple A Worcester. He's rated as the number 28 Red Sox prospect by MLB Pipeline and they're really excited about him. Rich Hill had taken a self-imposed break from baseball for the spring and summer to coach his 12-year-old son Bryce's Little League team. He kept his left arm in shape, and the Red Sox brought him back to fortify a pitching staff that had just been plagued by injuries and inconsistent performance since the break. And then on August 29th, he retired all four batters he faced and struck out two of them in his first appearance of the season. That made him the only active player in the majors to make at least one appearance in each of the past 20 seasons 
that night he said it's pretty special i think just effort and work everybody asks what's the secret it's work just keep putting in the days one drop in the bucket every day his second appearance was also a good one as he got four outs and didn't allow a base runner at Detroit on August 31st. And then the next day, even though Cooper Criswell had a perfect game for four innings with the Red Sox holding a 1-0 lead, Cora opted to bring in Hill to face a boatload of left-handed hitters. But that outing didn't go well as he walked leadoff batter Kerry Carpenter in a tough 12-pitch plate appearance. And then two batters later... Spencer Torkelson hit a two-run homer, and the Red Sox were on their way to the start of what ended up being a five-game losing streak that they finally snapped on Friday night against the White Sox. And then in Hill's fourth and final appearance on Wednesday night against the Mets, he tried to get closer Kenley Jansen out of a mess in the bottom of the eighth inning, but instead walked a pair of batters with the bases loaded. That was the game when the Red Sox just walked a bunch of batters in that inning, five total walks in the inning, and completely fell apart in such unacceptable manner. So he was part of that. But Cora doesn't think his swift ramp up back to the majors played much of a role in his struggles the last two outings or in the team's decision to move on from him. Cora did say if you talk to him, it was just about not throwing strikes, right? He looked good the first one here, and then the carpenter at bat was a good one, and then he gave up the homer. The last one, he wasn't able to throw strikes, and like I said, there's more about Guerrero adding a good fastball to the bullpen, a good split, and see where it takes us. He's throwing the ball well. Maybe that can help us over the next three and a half weeks. If this does end up being it for Hill in the major leagues, he will finish with 386 appearances, 248 of those being starts, a 90-74 and 74 record, a 401 ERA, and 1,409 innings pitched. And he will remain the gift that keeps on giving for people who play the Immaculate Grid, certainly, because aside from his multiple stints for the Red Sox, he also pitched for the Cubs, Orioles, Guardians, Angels, Yankees, A's, Dodgers, Twins, Rays, Mets, Pirates, and Padres. So he has so much experience with so many different teams, but at the end of the day, the Red Sox wanted to give Guerrero, the 24-year-old, a chance, who owns a 331 ERA, 20 earned runs over 54.1 innings pitched, with a .198 opponent batting average and 13.09 strikeouts per nine innings. 79 strikeouts in 42 games with Worcester this season. The right-hander has allowed just one run in his last 10 outings, dating back to August 4th in the minors, posting a .68 ERA with 23 strikeouts and 13.1 innings during that span. He was born in the Dominican Republic and moved to Boston's Franklin Park neighborhood as a child and grew up in the area, and he was then selected by the Red Sox in the 17th round of the 2021 first-year player draft, and he's posted a 2.93 ERA, giving up 48 earned runs over 147.2 innings pitched in 118 career minor league games. So he's somebody that has impressed in the minors and numbers wise. He looked really good. So the Red Sox wanted to give him a chance after his success in AAA. And he was used in the series. So he did not pitch Friday night when the Red Sox won 3-1. to one. He also did not pitch on Saturday when the Red Sox won 7-5, but he did make an appearance in Sunday's 7-2 loss. He pitched two-thirds of an inning and gave up zero earned runs in that span. Basically, Zach Kelly was the one responsible for the downfall. He came in out of the pen and just pitched a third of an inning and gave up Five earned runs in that span with one walk and one strikeout. 3.58 ERA for him on the season. Now, I am so over Zach Kelly. When the Red Sox hopefully do a complete revamp of the bullpen this offseason, he should be one of the first ones to go. I am so done with him. He had a complete collapse, but Louis Guerrero did come in to record the last two outs of the game and he looked good putting up zeros across the way there definitely a frustrating loss for the boston red sox in this one but he was able to get robert to hit a sacrifice fly and it did score a run but then benintendi flied out to center to end the inning but he did give up the sacrifice fly, but the run wasn't charged to him because 
it was when Zach Kelly was pitching that he got on base. So that's why that run was charged to Zach Kelly and not Guerrero. But he still looked good, went out there and got two outs. So definitely cannot complain about that. So we'll see how he does the rest of the season. I mean, again, the Red Sox and their playoff hopes aren't exactly existent at this point. But having Guerrero in there to help make an impact could certainly help us get more excited for the future of this Boston Red Sox team and the organization if they know they have a good piece in him. Coming up, the Red Sox did do a little bit more roster shuffling over the weekend, parting ways finally with a player who seems like he had 6,000 lives with the Red Sox. So that's coming up. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. eBay Motors is a lifesaver, especially for somebody like me that doesn't really know anything about cars. So taking advantage of it today, if you're anything like me, will change your life. The Red Sox did record a 7-2 loss on Sunday against the White Sox when Louis Guerrero did get his opportunity to pitch for the first time with the Boston Red Sox, and he did get two outs when he was pitching, so that was good to see. The Red Sox are trying to give him a shot for sure um, and see what he has up his sleeve, but it was also a game that involved many mistakes for the Red Sox, a bobble by Casas at first base that led to the White Sox scoring a run, a miscue by Greg Weiser when he was pitching to drive in a run for the White Sox, and many base running mistakes for the Red Sox just running into outs in the game. So a sloppy one overall for Boston, but I'm glad Guerrero got his opportunity in that one to showcase a little bit of what he can do since he's been playing so well in AAA. But the Red Sox did make some roster moves prior to the game on Sunday. They selected right-handed pitcher Richard Fitz to the active major league roster from AAA Worcester. He will wear number 80 with the team. And they optioned right-handed pitcher Chase Shugart to Worcester following Saturday night's game against the White Sox. Now, Chase Shugart had pitched in the Red Sox 7-5 to win on Saturday, but he didn't look good. He came in in relief of Chriswell, who got the win in the game, going five innings, giving up six hits and two earned runs. And then Shugart came in after him and threw 1.1 innings, giving up four hits and three earned runs. He gave up a three-run homer, and it was tough because... The Red Sox were up 7-2. It felt like they were coasting through, and then he struggled in the inning. He gave up a walk, and then a single, and then a flyout, and then gave up a three-run homer to Andrew Benintendi to make it a 7-5 to game. And then he gave up a single again after the home run. So then Alex Cora pulled him and brought in Brennan Bernardino, who got the last two outs of the inning. But... The game was close, and it remained 7-5, and Kenley Jansen was able to come in and get the White Sox 1-2-3 in the ninth to close out the game. But he did get his chance, Sugar. He was a September call-up for the Red Sox, had gotten called up at one other point in time because of an injury, and didn't last very long in the majors. They sent him back down to AAA, and then he got called up again as a September call-up to give him another shot. Didn't look good in his outing, so the Red Sox did some more reshuffling on Sunday and brought in Richard Fitz, who actually made his major league debut in the game and started it for the Red Sox on Sunday. And even though the game was annoying and the Red Sox lost and Zach Kelly completely fell apart, Richard Fitz looked really good. He went five and two-thirds and gave up six hits and two runs, but neither of them were earned because the Red Sox did make two errors in the game, and the errors were what caused those runs to score. And he 
struck out two and walked one. So he has a 0, 0.00 ERA still on the season. He was coasting through that five and two thirds innings. And then Greg Weiser came in and pitched 1.1 innings, gave up a run that also was unearned. And again, it was the defense that was causing these runs to score. But I was really impressed by what I saw from Richard Fitz in that Major League debut that he made. And he started the game. It was supposed to be a Tanner Houck start, but Alex Cora decided to push back his next start because he struggled a bit in his last outing. So the Red Sox decided that his next start will be in game two of the series against the Yankees coming up this week. So he's basically just missing a start in the rotation. So they had Fitz get called up to make this start and he looked good. And obviously the Red Sox have a full rotation with five starters in it, but Fitz could be available for a spot start every once in a while to give the rest of the starters some more rest in between their outings, which could be huge for them in terms of longevity and their ability to be successful next year and for the rest of the next few weeks so having him up is a good idea because he can make spot starts like this and just pitch when somebody else needs an extra rest day or something like that but he looked good in the game when he was pitching so it was nice to see a change sometimes a change of scenery is good a new arm in there that hasn't pitched yet is a good idea so he definitely looked like a major league pitcher in his start had command and just was focused and was getting the White Sox out pretty easily in this game. So he was able to have the opportunity to pitch in the game and the Red Sox also DFA'd Bobby Dahlbeck in this game because Richard Fitz was somebody who the Red Sox had gotten in the Alex Verdugo trade along with Greg Weiser and pitching prospect Nicholas Judas. And Verdugo has been struggling with the Yankees, so the trade is looking slightly better for the Red Sox right now, although we don't know what Judas is going to pan out to be. So we will see. But the Red Sox did DFA Bobby Dahlbeck prior to Sunday's game. He at once was Boston's starting first baseman, but he struggled to make contact and spent most of the past two seasons at AAA Worcester. Alex Cora said if you look at the swing and miss percentages, he's up there. He's still a good player, a good defender, has some pop. He's a good athlete, so we'll see what happens in the upcoming days, and then we'll know more, which is true. He was a good defender at first base. He just could not hit when he was up at the majors and was hitting a lot better in AAA. He technically was on the 40-man roster, so they DFA'd him if he clears waivers, meaning no other team's claim him, then the Red Sox would be able to outright him to Worcester, in which case he would not be on the 40-man roster anymore. He's eligible for minor league free agency this offseason if he still remains off the 40-man roster once free agency begins. He crushed 25 homers as a rookie in 2021, but since then he has batted just 198 with a 269 on base percentage, 330 slugging percentage, 599 OPS, 14 homers, 13 doubles, two triples, 48 RBIs, 41 walks, and 198 strikeouts in 175 games, 499 plate appearances for Boston. He's 29 years old, right-handed hitter, has a 36.8% strikeout percentage in the majors, punching out 384 times in 1,044 plate appearances. So big yikes there. He's a 2016 fourth round pick out of Arizona, batted 255 with a 341 on base percentage, 492 slugging percentage, 833 OPS, 19 homers, 17 doubles, one triple, 64 runs, 59 RBIs, 41 walks, and 132 strikeouts in 85 games, over 364 plate appearances for the Woo Sox this year. And he appeared in 37 games for Boston, slashing just 133 with a 217 on base percentage and 193 slugging over 93 plate appearances. So for your reference, a 255 batting average in AAA compared to a 133 batting average in the majors. Huge difference. Alice Cora was asked if Dahlbeck could benefit from a change of scenery. And Cora said, I hate to say that, right, but it's happened before. Like I said, let's see what happens in the upcoming days and we'll know more. But they DFA'd him to clear that spot on the 40-man roster for Richard Fitz, who made his debut. And they cleared a spot on the active roster at the major league level by optioning Chase Sugar. So the 40-man roster he wasn't on. So he had a spot 
that needed to be opened up on that. So that is why Bobby was DFA'd. Opening a spot on the active major league roster is a little bit different, and that's what they did by optioning Chase Shugart to Worcester to make room on the active major league roster for him. So it's kind of amazing to me that they actually DFA'd Bobby Dahlbeck. He's somebody who I felt like had a million lives here because no matter how much he struggled, they would still keep him in the organization. He would get sent back down to Worcester, get called back up to the majors, and that cycle would just continue over and over for him. So the fact that he was finally DFA'd, was interesting. I mean, I definitely hope the best for him. I hope he gets an opportunity elsewhere, and I think a change of scenery could be best for him at this point in his career. But he was DFA'd, and now I'm looking forward to seeing if somebody claims him, and also looking forward to seeing if Fitz is able to contribute at the major league level. So the Red Sox certainly were busy over the weekend in terms of roster moves. Did take two of three from the White Sox, but Hopefully they can continue to play competitive baseball here and some of these new guys can really showcase what they're able to do. As I always say, just keep the faith no matter how hard things get. Go Red Sox and I will catch you on the flip side.